Thank you guys for joining us. My name is Maria Pelch. I'm a senior man manager at Concordium. And with me today, I have Holger Fischer, who's a blockchain analyst at Concordium. And today we'll be taking you through the use cases that have been launched and is launching on Concordium. It'll be about 30 minutes. We'll do it short and crisp in the beginning with some updates that we're very excited to share with you. And then afterwards, we'll make time for some questions. Um, some of you have already sent some in, which is great. But should any pop up, just feel free to plug them into whatever chat platform is on the media that you're watching. With that, should we dive in? Yes, let's do All it. All right. So I think the first case that we wanted to start with is my Somi ID, which launched on Friday last week, yeah. which was quite incredible. Um, it's something that ha we have been anticipating for quite a bit here internally. It's solving one of the biggest issue, I think, at least in the Web2 space, which is trust and verification on the internet. How do we know that the people that we're talking to are actually the person that they claim to be, um, that they are an actual individual, that they're not a bot? Um, and all of those things, my SOMI ID is actually going in and countering for. Um, it's already live now with a LinkedIn feature. So any one of you watching can actually go online and claim your identity and verify that you are the person that you claim to be on LinkedIn. Um, you can do it on MySomi ID. MySomi.id. MySomi.id. Yes. Yeah. And it's fairly easy, so I trust you all to get started on it. But it's a massive celebration. It's launched by Concordium, but it's actually a community project that has yeah. been developed by all of the great people that we have in our community that have all contributed. So thank you all very much for that. Great. Let's dive into some of the fun things, Holger. DeFi. Yeah. So, um, I mean, as a broader ecosystem update here uh, for the Concordium ecosystem, uh, at the beginning here of 2023, um, there has been a lot of the new DeFi infrastructure that has sort of come into place. Um, we have our first launch pad, which is getting their smart contracts audited at the moment, which means they'll actually launch on mainnet, hopefully here at the end of May. Um, and as any uh, ecosystem, there is a specific DeFi infrastructure that you need in order to be successful. Tell us. A launchpad is one of them, basically to new people tuning in who's not really, what can you say, up to speed with crypto or blockchain lingo. A launchpad is a token fundraising protocol where projects uh, launches their tokens and then they uh, allow retail investors, institutions to invest at a project at an early stage. It's very important uh, to be able to facilitate that for projects which are dependent or are developing what you call a proprietary token or fungible token, um, which uh, then not only has specific utility on the platform, uh, but then also uh, can be a speculative asset on the side. Um, and this then leads me to the second piece of infrastructure, which will launch on Testnet, which is here on the 25th of May, and that is Concordix. It's actually the first native DEX that is being developed uh, on Concordium and it's launching on Concordium. Um, and just thinking about a, a joint effort uh, of the whole Concordium team uh, that is working uh, with us right now, both like commercial team, product team, engineering team. Over the past three months, uh, there has been a lot of, of effort in, 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 in setting all of this up. Um, because basically what will happen now is that when Testnet opens up on the 25th, all projects, which is dependent on a fungible token, uh, will actually be able to go in and set up liquidity pool, uh, test how everything works. Uh, so when Concordix launches on mainnet, uh, everything can get started fast. Um, and it's, it's a pretty big milestone for the whole ecosystem, I must say. Uh, and it's also why we work so hard on it. And there's a lot of other uh, important components and, and, and features that are sort of need to be in place for this to happen. Um, a first one here is, of course, a bridge, uh, which for Concordium will be an ERC-20 token bridge. So this means that we'll actually be able, or the bridge will be able to uh, bridge in assets or ERC-20 tokens. Um, this includes stable coins, just as a wrapped USDC, USDT, a wrapped BTC, and of course, uh, tokens like ETH as well. Um, and this also opens up for the larger DeFi trader community, which Concordium really hasn't been able to tap into yet, uh, but which we are uh, welcoming now with open arms. Um, because it means that you'll be able to set up liquidity pools, 
the CCD against the CCDX, which would be the native token of Concordix. And then uh, also uh, what is the most interesting part is that you'll actually be able to set up liquidity pools uh, by other uh, SIS2 tokens, um, which is what we call, um, it's a Concordium uh, implementation uh, standard, uh, which is the token standard that you develop your tokens on, on top of Concordium. Net. Um, and this means that projects, if they want to list their token and they can wait for a centralized exchange to pick it up, sometimes that can be quite a, a hazardous process, um, then you can actually just set it up uh, in a liquidity pool against the CCD or stablecoin on Concordix. Um, and it's, it's a great way for a project to gain traction and open it up to other ecosystems and, and just basically get out there, right? Um, so I think that's that's very important uh, feature to start talking about. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's the DeFi update. Then obviously, since I'm allowed in the room as well, we have mm -hmm. to talk a bit about ESG too. Um, a huge focus for us in Concordium has been to be able to provide the infrastructure needed for a lot of these ESG or sustainability projects that are quite rapidly growing up. I think the World Economic uh, Forum just launched their blockchain as a solution for a scaling global impact, um, a huge report. And I think that's really an, an area that we want to support in Concordium too. It started with uh, on Earth Day, we were able to finally launch um, the numbers about the emissions on Concordium. And obviously with the consensus layer, we have the Rust coding language that we have, we're quite just intuitively and per design, quite eco-friendly, but now we can thankfully claim us to be carbon neutral, actually climate positive, because we've offset it way more than, than what we've, we've consumed over the past three years. Um, and for me, that's really an important part of being able to build up this ESG ecosystem on Concordium, um, on and around Concordium. We need to be able to make sure that any of these projects that are trying to do positive impact on the planet have the best uh, platform to actually build it on. Um, so that's the first step. The second step is obviously getting the tooling there for anyone to start using and the Agora marketplace, which I think how many projects do we have now using it? We have uh, around six or seven projects yeah. actually currently using that framework. Yeah. And obviously that NFT platform has a lot of capabilities that these impact projects can use too. We've had Climify who have used it to launch their climate exchange for peatland tokens. It took them just a few weeks actually to get up and running. And now internally we're modifying all of the tools to make it as easy as possible. Um, it actually also enabled Climify to build what we called a, a new standard for hemp. So now they have three different different carbon credits that they are launching on Concordium, which is massive. Um, after that, there's some other tooling coming um, that will help these projects actually be able to scale the financing that they need um, to solve some of the climate issues. Here, I think what Concordium brings is really the ID layer for both the people who own the land, for the auditors and the verifiers of uh, those specific credits, and then also for the sellers, we have Climify, that to me is, is one of the coolest projects because they're selling UK peatland credits and they're targeting just the UK region, which is where something as the ID layer on Concordium can actually go in and counter for that on a smart contract level. Um, so that's massive. On more on ESG, I'll just do a little bit more, yeah. right? Um, more on ESG is that in, on top of doing these impact market, which can either be, you know, blue ocean credits or, or green credits or biodiversity credits. We're also looking very much into ESG reporting, which for a lot of companies is going to be by law, at least in the EU, by 2024. We're in Cape Town and Johannesburg earlier this year, and that's legislation coming in by 2025. So it's really picking up. And we've had a revo with us in the ecosystem since, what is that, since the launch, actually, I think. They've made this really impressive tool called an Easy Rider, which basically lets you connect through an API to any data that you want to bring on a blockchain and fossilize. If you're doing ESG reporting, that's quite important. One thing is being sure that you have the data. Another thing is actually being able to prove and verify it at the time that it occurred. They've just launched a partnership uh, with a company called Generation Global Impact, uh, which is one of the most prominent uh, companies in in Europe working on the taxonomy of these regulations 
And together they've actually launched um, a tool for taking that ESG data and writing it directly to Concordium. So that's a massive news and I think that's also where we're slowly getting to with the ecosystem that now everyone is trying to work together on making each of their solutions even better. Exactly. Um, and I think a, a big part of that now that you touched on it is these low-code architecture mm. frameworks is actually something we're working uh, much harder on being able to, to deliver uh, and the Concordium team uh, and its joint efforts uh, both from external uh, developers, uh, the product team, commercial team, because as we experienced here now the attractiveness uh, and, and how many uh, projects actually want to use these low-code frameworks, it ensures a faster time to market and it also ensures that they're using battle-tested technology, uh, which has proven itself. Uh, so now that we have a NFT uh, marketplace for it, uh, as you just mentioned, Maria, uh, a carbon marketplace, uh, and we are also actually looking into now doing an asset tokenization marketplace for it as well. This means that we'll be able to approach uh, and, 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 and pull in an asset tokenization project at a much faster rate because it's much more attractive for them to come in and develop their solution on top of Concordium and in the, the ecosystem. Um, so I think that's also important to mention as that is something that is big efforts uh, from both the product team, commercial team, engineering team all around uh, to make it more attractive uh, with uh, low code frameworks uh, to start building. Yeah. Good. And then the final news I think from, from the agenda that we send out something that we've been teasing out uh, a bit since I think November last year. Uh, we made a partnership with a player in the Philippines, um, which is they're supporting both governmental uh, instances, but also businesses in the Philippines, which is the country in the world with the second highest crypto adoption, which is quite significant. Um, but they're helping these companies actually develop and explore blockchain solutions. And we made a partnership with them. They're based in some of the economic zone in Asia under um, the, they call it the offshore blockchain and financial technical solutions. <laughs> I'll send, we'll send it out in a press release for you to read in details, no worries about it. Hmm. But their CEO, he's on the board of the National Blockchain Council of the Philippines. And it's really a partner that I think personally has a lot of impact in the, in the Philippines market and can give us a lot of very good introduction. So we're working with them on three different things. Two of them is, is looking into how we can provide identity for people in the economic zone. Another thing is looking into how we can provide I corporate identities for the companies operating within the economic zone. Um, and the last thing is looking into how we can support outside of the economic zone with Concordium blockchain. So helping train some developers in, in the Philippines as well as building up a community there. Um, so I'm very excited about how that project will launch off. We'll share some more detailed news with you very soon. Yeah. But I think we managed to do it short and crisp. Again, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to send them in. Um, they will be coming onto this iPad as we speak. But maybe the first question is, are we ready for them? Yes. It's not only important to talk about the latest blockchain use cases, but give updates on the status of other use cases. What's going on? Are all mentioned use cases actually still building on Concordium? That's a very good question. It is actually. a very good question. Sometimes we uh, focus a lot on what's coming in and what's happening in the ecosystem and maybe not as much on uh, who is actually uh, sort of already developing, building, scaling and, and are soon ready to go live. Um, but I think on the top of my head, I uh, compared to, I mean, we have or Concord, there's 40 projects building on top of Concordium right now. Uh, and three projects that were an, was announced throughout fall in 2022. One of them was Pixel, uh, an NFT marketplace for gaming solutions, uh, who is actually working on quite of an innovative way of being able to ensure uh, NFTs. Um, they actually just came out now uh, with a simple DEX solution, which is the first one uh, in the Concordium ecosystem. And basically what this means is it, it's, it's not a, a complex uh, decentralized exchange like Concordix, but it's a simple DEX where you can go in and swap a SIS2 token to another SIS2 token, or you can uh, swap it to, to, to other ERC20 assets that, that we can uh, bridge in now. Um, that is a very good update. Um, another one would be Bank of Memories, uh, which is also enrolled in the grant application process. 
They actually uh, just announced that they will uh, list their uh, SIS2 token, their fungible token, uh, on Gate.io uh, and have initiated a new partnership with them. Um, and that's always nice, right? When um, we early on believe in these projects, we enroll them in the grant application process, and now when they're close to finishing their solution, uh, a lot of the bigger players in the industry is also picking up on them. Um, and then a final one I have to mention, of course. <laughs> Is, uh, that is uh, our uh, CNS naming service. I saw in the community there was a lot of chatter, a lot of questions towards that. Um, so I want to address that as well. Um, over the past couple of months, we have been in uh, close um, dialogue with the team who actually ran a naming service on uh, another layer one called Hedera Hashgraph. And they did that very successfully, very efficiently, where they actually uh, minted and, 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 and sold up to 20,000 uh, uh, of their domains. Um, and now um, we are close to, uh, to, to signing the contract with this team uh, and they will actually then uh, uh, operate and own uh, the CNS naming service uh, and completely build it up from scratch. Because to be honest, it wasn't done properly for the first time by the last team who did it. So I think that is a very important update as well. What about you? Do you have any uh, <laughs> interesting updates from projects? Always, always. I think one of the one of the important ones to mention that also got a lot of uh, a lot of hack from the community because it didn't get the reach that we were sort of expecting is is in a keynote. and that's obviously mm. I think it it goes to say with all of the projects that we have building that are either big logo or national players, it takes a bit longer time for them to actually feel comfortable going out with the news. Sometimes it's a pilot project, other times it's a dialogue that takes a bit longer. And, and in Aguina, it is one of the cases where we almost made it to the launch of, of the solution before we went out with it. But the team behind it is in, in full throttle um, in the implementation phase. And now it's slowly building out. So it's not just the Danish uh, energy infrastructure, but they've reached a state where they're now in conversations with three other European TSOs, which is the equivalent of in Aguina in other countries. And TSO? Yeah, transmission system operator. It's ah, the people who balance. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be on. I mean, each of one of you should know it as well. Um, but it's uh, they're in conversation with these um, people who are doing the same job as in Aguina. It is in in three other countries at least in Europe for now. Um, so we're very excited to see how that develops. And I think talking personally from from the questions that I get when we're out at conferences, it's also one of the bigger topics. People are very interested in the fact that it's a national player doing something that um, a lot of companies or, or countries can adopt. Yeah. Then we have Open Business Council that I think would be fun to mention too. Open Business Council is a partnership and project that we announced last year. Um, they are doing global corporate identities and they are now connected to 95 registries all over the world. And they've actually onboarded 11,000 companies from publicly available wow. data. Yeah, that's impressive. It's very impressive. I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm very, uh, very happy about it too. But they have 11,000 companies that are through these uh, publicly available data and now have a corporate global identity. Um, so that one is is moving forward as well. And then Boosty Labs, perhaps, do you want to say? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, we can maybe both weigh in a little yeah. bit, but uh, it's a big developer house uh, that uh, provides a lot of critical infrastructure to a lot of uh, ecosystems around. Uh, and uh, we've been working very close together with them over the past couple of months and is now zooming in on uh, another critical uh, DeFi infrastructure product, uh, which uh, hopefully uh, soon will be announced as well. And um, then on top of that. Yeah. We also have a partnership with them on some of the more general tooling uh, yeah. that we have on Concordium. Um, and actually looking into doing some bigger pitches together with them. So we're using each other for, for a sparring and then leveraging each other's ecosystems because they are very well-known uh, developer house. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's also important to foster these relationships uh, early on, right? Especially when you are fast growing, young uh, ecosystem, like uh, the one on top of Concordium, with a lot of projects coming in, starting building, getting to know each other, <laughs> um, but then also be able to, to sort of weigh in on, on, on other industry expertise with developer houses that has experience from other large ecosystems that has actually been thriving for a lot of years, right? 
um, and then be able to tap into that is is very important. Uh, so more of these is something relationships with developer houses is something we're working closely on on fostering and developing. Yeah. All right. Any other questions coming in? There's a million, but I'm I'm picking <laughs> I'm picking Protocol Labs did an announcement of Concordium and Zones partnership. This is a fairly big venture capital this to be put in conjunction with. How did this happen? That's a good one. Yeah. But that's true that happened the last week. And it's true, Protocol Labs is a is a fairly big uh, VC in the crypto blockchain sphere. Um, funding a, a lot of ecosystems, a lot of projects. Just on top of my head, they are one of the early backers of, of Filecoin as well. Um, and uh, they did a reinvestment in Zone, which is a, a metaverse project uh, or in, in a metaverse project aimed at the entertainment industry, uh, building on top of Concordium. Uh, and it's using uh, Concordium's ID layer as an uh, security point, as an, as an access point, right? Uh, to protect uh, the people that are interacting and the artists that are using the platform. Um, and it's true that uh, they did an announcement about Concordium and Zone, uh, which is always uh, interesting to see, right? That these projects that is actually building on top, as I said before, is, is being picked up by the biggest players in, uh, in the industry because uh, it's, uh, it's important. It is. But that is true. Uh, that was a good announcement. Uh, and. Uh, we already have a meeting set up with uh, Protocol Labs uh, to talk about maybe potential uh, further uh, investments in, in the broader ecosystem. Um, so that's always important. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Let's see. What is the status of the partnership with Royal Con Enskedet? Cancelled <laughs> or still alive? Well, it is very much still alive. Um, it's. It's a bit of a secret, actually. Um, there's not that much we can say about it just yet. But they are working with a couple of major uh, postal services on the crypto stamps that has already been launched. Um, so that's more of a, you know, stay tuned. We're not going to announce the news just yet. Um, but it is very much still alive. And they have built a very cool website, actually, for for other postal services to, to go in and get in, it inspired from um, cypress.me. So very much alive. So very much <laughs> alive, definitely not. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to keep rolling mm. and we'll see. Yeah, just go. OK, which of the current building projects will be the next catalyst to take the Concordium blockchain to the masses? Yeah. Do you want to take it? Yeah, that's a good one. Can I see it here? Um, wow, there is a lot of questions <laughs> coming in. I mean, I definitely think that uh, now that we have um, uh, a lot of the important infrastructure coming in, uh, that is sort of what will bring a lot of attention to the Concordium ecosystem. It will bring in, connect us to a, uh, connect Concordium ecosystem to a lot of other ecosystems. But compared to, I mean, the innate features of building on Concordium, why would you choose to take your project to Concordium instead of another layer one? I think it's important to touch upon a project like Acerex, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they're currently doing a, a seed round, but basically what they're doing is that they, they eliminate the need for usernames, passwords, uh, and they're making the process of logging into websites and apps uh, a, a completely different game, right? They're making it more secure. Um, and, 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 and I think this is very important to talk about because they're using the Concordum ID layer as well. Um, uh, for, for be able to facilitate their solution. Um, and it's a big problem out there right now with these privacy solutions, seeing a lot of these larger companies getting a lot of big fines mm. for not handling PII or personal identifiable information well enough. Uh, and, and, and a solution like a Cerex is, is one that's important to mention here because, I mean, if you just look at the broader narrative right now in the crypto blockchain sphere, uh, the zero knowledge proof technology is gaining a lot of traction right now. And be able to hold your personal identifiable information in your wallet and through zero knowledge proofs to do various checks. Uh, I mean, verify information without storing it or revealing mm -hmm. any other information besides that simple attribute you want to verify is very important, right? And some of these solutions like a Cerex that's building on top of Concordium uh, because of its ID layer and its zero knowledge proof technology, which is uh, rapidly advancing, and I think we'll be giving more updates on on the next tech updates as well. 
I think these solutions is actually what could bring mass adoption, right? Because it makes it easier for people that aren't really in the web free world yet to understand how blockchain technology, zero knowledge proof as a cryptographic method, can help to preserve um, data privacy and uh, and 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 secure secure uh, to secure data as well. Um, so I think that that's a very important one. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else do we have here. Currently, what is your priority for build and develop? Well, I can take that one. <laughs> um, I think it's 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 quite important for us to do two sides of that story. One of them is is figure out what is it that our community and the ecosystem around us actually need in terms of infrastructure. I think you did a really good job, Holger, in explaining what is coming and how that will actually support our ecosystem in, in growing naturally and, and having the capabilities that they need. But another thing for us is also figuring out what is the need um, from the market. And I think for me, you know, I have a personal uh, little vendetta, but I'm, <laughs> I'm obviously looking into building things within ESG and sustainability. And with that, there's a million different products we can build to support which will then go into our product team and reinforce uh, the roadmap that we've mm. planned. Um, so a lot of it is, you know, what is the what is the tendency in the market? What yeah. are people looking for? You know, if we have a project coming in that wants to do track and trace, for instance, we will have something like provenance tax that we can yeah. help support. And perhaps we will build some tooling that can enable other companies to do it themselves. But all of it is always based on what market requires or general products that we have. I think yeah. it's, you can, if you want to go in and check the roadmap that we have on the on the website. Exactly. That would be one way of showing it, but then the rest is very market driven. Yeah. Um, and then to quickly weigh in here also, a, a great example of this is um, Space7, which yes. is, has a lot of interesting projects in the pipeline. They're looking for a new uh, feature uh, uh, in, in, in the Concordium smart contracts, which is what you call a royalty shield standard. And a, a lot of you, if you've heard about NFTs, is, is an important feature here is actually the implementation of a royalty, which means that every time the NFT is being sold, you make sure that the rightful owner actually get a cut, right? It's very fair in many ways. Now, uh, because of, 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 of a growing and important uh, pipeline for big projects in Space7, Concordum has then adapted a part of that roadmap to make sure that, that they can facilitate uh, a solution like that, or that, or I should say, functionality in the smart contract for that to be more precise. Um, and that's always important, right? To be able to support the ecosystem, to projects that build on top, listen to what they have in the pipeline, and then try and see if you can accommodate that in the best way possible without mitigating or losing any other potential important priorities. Cautious of time, I'm, I'm picking my favorite. How long do we have uh, back? I think we have about two minutes. Two left. minutes, okay. okay. All right, I'm picking my priorities. Yeah. What measures do you have in place to prevent bridge attacks? That is a good one. Yeah. That is a very good one. Um, so I definitely think that uh, now that we have the first uh, one bridge coming in and hopefully a second one as well, um, security on, on that is a very uh, big and important aspect, right? To be honest, I'm not a, uh, okay, so a specialist on uh, bridges and, 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 and how they are secure, um, but security audits is, is a big part of it, right? And every time if you are implementing into a cross-chain bridge, which has multiple other uh, uh, smart contracts and layer ones already implemented into it, uh, then we are making sure that the security audits are being done again uh, to mitigate any potential risk when you are including uh, a new one, right? I know that is because that is where big hacks happens on bridges. If you don't do the security audit every time you sort of uh, write new code or uh, include new smart contracts. So just to like give a quick update. To that make is it a shorter, yeah. Chris, <laughs> got it. We'll, leave, we'll end it off with just one question, which is, what is the best use case for Concordium's blockchain? 10 seconds, go. Best use case for Concordium blockchain is uh, the ID layer. It's uh, to creating a safer digital world and to enable institutions, retailers to harness the full potential of blockchain technology. 
So I think that is the best way of saying it, maybe. Great. I'll make it a bit more specific. To me, I think the best use case for Concordium is the fact that you can use zero knowledge proof to help companies share scope three emissions data. And you want for ESG one. reporting, I definitely did. <laughs> Thank you all very much for uh, tuning in today. And of course, our team will be available to answer any questions we didn't answer here. The marketing team is on our different channels. Yeah. So just feel free to reach out and Thank you guys. Thank you very much.